hey, do you feel like you're constantly pulled in two directions? You're trying to create better opportunities for yourself and your family through expansion, um, growing your business, growing yourself, working on a side hustle, but you also want to be a good husband and and father. You feel the urge to provide for your family financially. You want to have them set. You you want to make sure that they have at least what you never had growing up, and you want to leave a legacy. You truly want to serve your family, but there is this conflict, right? Because you are wanting to be as well what they really need, and that is your presence, the husband, that father. And it's hard to balance the two sometimes, right? Especially when you feel like you need to be working all the time and there there doesn't seem to be enough time in the day. Uh, have you ever had that feeling? Do you know that if you're experiencing that, you're not the only one, even though sometimes it does feel that way? It, it looks You look around, you seem like other people who are getting ahead and crushing it and doing the things that you want to do. It seems like they have the time or the support or they have the, t- you know, it, it, they have an advantage and, and somehow you're trying to, to at least get yourself going and, and establish yourself. And man, it's like upward uphill molasses going uphill. Have you ever heard that saying before? Like molasses going up uphill. You can imagine that, 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 um, imagery that creates, right? Slow process because they're coming back down and trying to get it up. It's it's tedious, right? Now, here's what happened. Would you believe that a whopping 70% of people like yourself and myself who are trying to do the very thing, that 70% grapple with this very thing? They may call it work-life balance, but they're grappling with that. But it also is true that another 60% confess they're, they feel like little time is left for the ones that they love. Um, Their wife, uh, your wife, uh, a husband, mainly a wife and, and children, right? But So in this video, what we're going to do in this video episode, we're going to talk about how to master the art of setting boundaries for work and home, because this is one of the, I believe, the key, the success to the success of what it is you're you're going after. Sometimes we, it's not so much what we're doing or not doing, it's because we might not realize that what's really missing is this idea of setting boundaries so that you can achieve the harmony in your life where you feel like things are coming together. Yes, it may be counterintuitive to be thinking about boundaries when we're talking about you want to get your business going, you want to expand, you want to grow professionally and have you know self-development. You see that as more the path, the entrepreneurial path, the side hustle to get yourself and your family situated financially. It seems to be more that path. And here it is I'm talking about setting boundaries. So what we're going to discuss in this video episode is that the importance of boundaries, you know, how to set them effectively, what are boundaries, how to overcome some of the the, the common challenges that as a husband, like you and I, we, we face regularly. And, and so I want to talk about some of those very things. And in doing so, let me just quickly say I'm Kingsley Grant from Happier Married Secrets, where we are on a mission to help married Christian professionals like yourself overcome common relationship challenges and and to build happier and more fulfilling marriages using a biblical and a scientific approach. So stay tuned. So the big question is this. How is it possible that you have a happier marriage when you feel like you've tried everything? Your spouse isn't making an effort. You're exhausted. You feel like giving up. Or there's so much hurt that's taken place between you and your spouse. That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. 
So what you've been listening to so far, as you may have by now realized, is a recording I did from my YouTube channel. And you can watch that channel at Kingsley Grant. Now let's continue with this episode, which by the way is episode number 75. Here's what I find. We know the same many times that, you know, a happy wife, a happy life. And there's some truth to that. But I believe also a husband, right, that feels supported and gets the backing that he needs also leads to a happier life. So there are a number of things that goes into that. And it's just not as simply put as, as you know, it sounds very rhyming and so, you know, sounds really good the, to roll off the tongue. Happy wife, happy life. But there's a lot more nuances that goes along with that. So let's start off then by talking about boundaries. What are boundaries? Now, boundaries are limits that we set for ourselves and others in order to protect our time, our energy, and our overall well-being. They can be physical boundaries, emotional boundaries, or mental boundaries. But also, you know, let's add spiritual boundaries as well. We've got to be able to uh, go after the whole person, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and relationally. We've got to set those boundaries in our lives if we're going to be able to experience what it is you're working so hard to get to get into to go after, right? To accomplish, to to succeed at. So that is what boundaries are: limits that we set for ourselves and others, right? And others in order to protect our time, our energy, and our well-being. Now, why are boundaries so important? Well, for a number, a number of reasons that we will, you're not going to cover all that here, but let me just say that boundaries are important because they help us to avoid burnout. They help us avoid burnout. I cannot tell you how many people have talked about how they feel very burnout in life and in their work, in their business, in their career. And I I think part of that, because when I look at my coaching with those or counseling with those individuals, many of them will tell me that they feel as if there's no, the lines are blurred. There's no me time. There's no break. They just keep going and going and going. And sometimes it's not because they have to, but they just feel the pressure. Is the unspoken. Is that that voice in their head? And sometimes it's because they're trying to counter something that they're, you know, maybe have been from a childhood. So it could be a number of things. So it avoids burnout. It helps to improve productivity. Uh, so it helps to improve, improve productivity. It strengthens our relationships if we are able to focus on the relationships we want to strengthen. It also helps us to reduce stress, reduce stress in our lives, and in essence, live a more balanced and harm, harmonious life. That's what boundaries tends to do or allows us to do. And the results of when we set effective boundaries, when we set the right kind of boundaries, when we are able to clearly identify what areas we need to set boundaries in at work and at home and how we set those, it will determine what our lives look like. I love what someone says that boundaries are like underwear. They're essential, but you don't want to let everyone else see them, right? You don't want to let everyone see them. I mean, of course, nowadays, uh, unfortunately, we live in a society that it seems to be the cool thing, the trendy thing to to be showing your underwear. Both men and women are now doing that in a very in a public manner. I'm thinking, like, wait a minute, you know. But I guess it's just where our society have gone. But that's not for me to judge. It's simply saying, you know, it's like underwear. When you set boundaries, you don't have to go and broadcast all of them. You don't have to be, you know, wearing a sign around your head. No, it is simply set, and sometimes it's you who set them for yourselves. And it may be unspoken. It may not be, you know, articulated where people hear that because sometimes you determine what you need for yourself and you set those boundaries. So how do you set boundaries in the in the workplace, right? And I'm going to mention a few things that determine on your situation. Like myself, you know, who is a, a solopreneur, I'm self-employed. I have to set boundaries around my time and my energy, um, around, you know, a number of things. Because if I don't, I can be my worst enemy. And, and you understand what that it was like as, you know, if you are also self-employed or an entrepreneur, or if you are basically, you know, in a leadership position, you know how sometimes we can find 
things to do and and because we don't have necessarily someone we are reporting to directly um, per se, we tend to can, you know, slack off and sometimes. But for the most part, when it comes to your work, you have to communicate those boundaries, both verbally and non-verbally. You have to be able to say when you are available and when you're not. A lot of people are afraid of that because of their personality. They see it as offensive. They don't want to hurt someone else feelings. But what happened is at what price? The price of their own relationship at home with your wife and their children, because you don't want to hurt someone else else's feelings. Well, guess what? But guess what? You are already doing that because you're hurting your wife's and your children's feelings. The question is, whose feelings would you rather hurt? Others or your family? I think you would choose the latter if you're like myself. But sometimes we just don't look at it that way, right? We got to communicate that. We got to set clear work hours and stick to them. I know sometimes it's very hard. As I talk about these things, I too grapple with this because sometimes I work from home and, you know, I'm you know home every day, basically when I'm working and I do most of my thing from my, most of my work from my office virtually. Every, you know, I do all my coaching and my counseling virtually. So sometimes the lines are blurred for me. When it's time to to finish my work, there's no set time. I cannot carry that over through my night in my evening. And I, I find myself sometimes my wife will have to come to my office and 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 knock at the door or look at me and and her looking is simply saying, Hey, wait a minute. When does work finish? You know, I, and I have to be sensitive and self aware to realize that's what she's really, really saying. You know, thank God my children are much older now, but I can tell you I can go back if I could go back and change any one thing. The thing I would change is the times that I was not available as I should for my children because I was so busy trying to make a life for them that I didn't have time to make life with them. And I miss some of those opportunities. I miss some of those times that I didn't make life with them because I'm working on making life for them. And that's a big difference right there. And I hope this that resonates with you. So like I said, clear hours. Avoid checking work things on non-work time. That is also challenging. I find myself, you know, I have this idea where I have my days off, I call them, but I will be on my computer and I'm, you know, researching things. An idea pops into my head. I may write it down someplace and I'm trying to research at the same time because I don't want to lose the momentum I think I have. But sometimes it feels like I'm always working. And, you know, I love to work. I love to work on things that I feel are putting putting us in place to create a, a brighter future financially um, and and build a legacy for my family. So I, I tend to be in that mode and and in that workspace. And sometimes it's hard to, to break away from that. And you understand that, right? It's hard. And that's where our challenges come in. When we are constantly on, we're on, we're on, and we never seem to have a time off. And it's so important to have time off because we rejuvenate, we get new ideas, we open room for things that we may not recognize that's really before us that can also help us to accomplish the things we need to accomplish. Another way, um, way to say boundaries, boundaries at work is to take breaks throughout the day. You know, again, like myself being self-employed, taking breaks are not so easy, right? I need to create those times. I love you know what someone have talked about the Pomodoro ex, um, you know, the, uh, Pomodoro um, experience where you work for so twenty five minutes or thirty five minutes and you're off five or eight or ten minutes and then you go back to work. You know, so you're taking a break every so often. But take lunch break. There was a time I would just really quickly grab something and come back to my desk because I, I feel like I, I I need to get all the time and not you know lose time. And but I have created times where I, when it's lunch time. Um, I, I take a break. I get out of my office. I go to my kitchen and my wife normally comes home for lunch. And when she is there or if she's not there, I just have some lunch and stay away from my office for that full hour because it's it's really important for me to do that. And sometimes during the day, I'll take a break and go outside with my dog, put him outside and just, you know, allow the sun rays to come in and just look around and experience that that moment. Be away from everything, my phone, my computer. Just be away, take breaks. That's how we set boundaries for ourselves and for for others. If you are in a position to delegate tasks, you're also creating boundaries so that you can have margins in your life to do do the most important thing, and that's be there for your family. Again, I know it's not easy. 
as I speak with, I speak about it from a place where I also struggle. Now, when it comes to your home, how do you set boundaries at home? So Kinsley, boundaries in a home seem to be oxymorons, right? That doesn't seem to fit. It seems to be a two polar opposite thoughts, but they're not. They're not. Because, for example, when I'm home and because I work from home and if I'm recording a video like this one or my podcast, Happy and Marriage Secrets podcast, I need to be in a room shut away from all the distractions and all the noises. So I will close my door. That's a boundary I've created. And my wife knows that. And my one of my, ch- one of my children who st- is at home still knows that. And so sometimes you may hear her earlier, you may hear my dog barking. I try to keep him away as far away from my door as possible so I can have quietness because it's not, you know, I'm trying to work with my clients in my coaching or my counseling and the dog is barking at the door. The door is closed, but because he's so loyal to me, he wants to stay as close as possible. The older he gets, he finds himself staying closer and he'll bark from the door and, you know, he could go to the window or to the front, but no, he wants to stay by my door and bark. And that drives me crazy sometimes, right? But I got to set a boundary. And sometimes I set up a a, a, a crate-like thing where, you know, I don't allow him to get into the hallway because that is also an issue where a boundary is, you know, violated. So to keep him at bay sometimes. But we got to do those things at home and, and also set aside time where, you know, for, for example, every Friday evening, unless something very Im- of emergency Every Friday evening is my date night. My wife and I will get out of the house. We'll do something. I want to get out of the house, but also it's creating a boundary around Friday evening. And so no one invites me. If someone invites me to go someplace or my wife, we said, I'm sorry, we have an appointment or we have um, something to do. We'll tell them what it is. Depends on the person. But we just have a, 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 it's on a schedule. It's scheduled in. Because why? If we don't set that boundary, I, knowing myself, I'll work right through those times. I'll just want to push through because I feel like if I only spend a few more hours, I can get it done and really get ourselves ahead and, you know, and all of that. So it's very challenging sometimes when I want to also, you know, uh, when it comes to our finances, I got to set a boundary even to myself because I may want to spend money to buy this program, get this coaching program, this mastermind, go here for this event. Because why? I feel it's all in the sense of working for the family. But if I don't put a boundary around that or, and held accountable, I would possibly get in trouble. So it's important to um, create those things for yourself, but also for those around you at home. You know, have a, a dedicated workspace. So when you're in the hallway or, you know, depends on where you live, uh, apartment or a house, in this case, my in my house, my office is my, my dedicated workspace. Now, there are times I will go in my family room and just chill out there with my wife and watch something on television. And if, you know, maybe on our phones or or my computer, but it's just really relaxed time. I try as much as possible to be present at that time as well. Now, also breaks from social media and other electronic devices. That's a boundary. Sometimes you got to put that in place because you know what you're working on. And what happened is the easy how easy for us to get distracted, right? We go down this rabbit trail. We never intend to go there. And before long, we are spending hours in a place we never intended to go, right? Does that happen to you? Am I the only one? Come on now. I'm not the only one. Let's let's be real. And what happened is we are, we spend some time wasting time sometimes, you know? And so when we are with our family at home, those boundaries is so we can be present with them, especially if your children are younger than my children are then you really need to spend time, we say, with them. Like I said earlier, I thought I was working and doing everything for them, which was really true. That was in my intent, well intended. But in doing those things for them, I missed the times of doing life with them, right? I want to create a life for them. I sometimes, in doing that, I overlook creating a life with them. Uh, Memories and so on, building that with my children. So, you know, I love what um, this this quote where uh, Richard Rich, Rich, Richard Lecron he said this: the the greatest gift you can give someone is your undivided attention. So that is what we want to be able to do when it comes to our family and and setting boundaries, right? And, and studies have proven that setting boundaries isn't just a nice idea. 
It's a life changer, right? Because when you craft these boundaries, we'll unlock reduced stress, right? We're going to unlock reduced stress. We're going to unlock improved sleep quality, and we're going to supercharge our productivity. So it's not just a great idea. It is an essential idea. It is so important. I love what the Bible says in Matthew 7, verse 6, where where Jesus was talking about, and he said, uh, he was talking, he says, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. Now, what what this verse verse teaches us and me, you and me, is that the importance of safeguarding our time and our energy, right? That's one application of this verse. And invest in them where they're truly valued because you don't throw um, pearls before swines, do you? Because a swine would trample that. They ha- it's not valued. It's not a valued thing. So be careful where you put your energy and your time. So the Bible is it's warning us to be to safeguard this very, very important thing. Really what he's saying in the essence is create boundaries for your life, right? Create boundaries for yourself. Jesus did that. So many times he would leave his very disciples, the very close ones to him, and he would go away and spend time in prayer with his father. He created boundaries for his life because he knew how important that was for him. He knew is where he got his energy. He knew is where he could come back and deposit and invest in people and create supernatural things, miraculous things. So if you want something supernatural and miraculous in your life, then maybe we can learn some lessons from Jesus and create boundaries in our lives so we can have margins and do the things that we need to do and become more productive in our lives, right? Because we have this one life to live. And as someone like yourself, I've been there, I have done that, and I've worked, I'm, I'm working, I'm you know, actually walking this path. You know, I've, I've walked and still am walking this path. And so I realize that we've got to do these things because if I don't, if you don't, what is going to happen is that we're going to get to the end and realize we didn't accomplish as much as we could have. So I want to encourage you to truly think about what it is you've heard me talk about today, how to set, to master the art of setting boundaries. And you've got to work on this. It's not a one-time thing. It's not a one-off thing, my friend. You've got to constantly remind people about this very idea of why that your time is so important and why you need to be doing some things and why you can be available at all times. This is very important. So remember, setting boundaries isn't about holding back your entrepreneurial spirit, right? Your aspirations. It's about channeling and it, you know, channel, I mean, channeling your, your, um, your spirit wisely for a successful business and more harmonious family life, right? Business and family life. If you want to have more a more successful one, a more harmonious one, a one where you can feel encouraged and supported and get the, the your your wife to be on your side because she feels like you're spending time and investing in her. So you're opening more channels for her to come alongside and support you. Then this is why boundaries are so, so critical. Now, let me give one, th- one final thought here as we wrap, wrap things up. As you embark on this journey, right? As you're on this journey, uh, know that you have a the potential to redefine your business and family life, right? Through mindful, a convention for mindful boundary setting. Again, it's not a one size fits all. It's not a one off thing, but it's a personal path, right? To to your in your journey, and so sometimes you might need outside help, a coach. You might need a mentor. You, may, you might need a mastermind. You might need a support group that can help you remain focused and grounded in your walk because find someone who's been there, who who is there, and who is like-minded. So my question to you, I want to leave with you is this. What are some boundaries that you need to set in your own life? What are some boundaries you need to set in your own life? Leave a comment below and let me know, right? Leave a comment below and let me know. And if this episode uh, resonated with you, don't forget to subscribe for more insights and that have been crafted just for you. And please, will you share this with one other person just like yourself? 
I would truly appreciate that. And they would probably also appreciate it and be better off for you doing that. So again, please subscribe. And remember, there is a podcast I mentioned earlier, my Happier Marriage Happier um, Marriage Secrets podcast that is available that covers a lot of other topics that I do. And also, if you want to gauge the state of your marriage, I would love to have a quiz, a free um, quiz that you can take and get an immediate response about what your marriage might be, where it might be, and what might be needed to take it to the next level, then I want you to, to go to happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz, happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz. And all the links will be found in the description below. So if you miss something, please go there and find the links, click on that, and make certain that we, you get the resources and take that quiz. Again, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for listening. And until next time, I'm Kingsley Grant, empowering you to unlock a life of balance and success so you can have a happier and fulfilled marriage. Let's go make marriages happier again. Thank you and God bless you. And there you have it. As you heard, this was recorded on my YouTube channel. And if you want to watch this episode, you can do so at Kings Grant. Make sure that when you do go there, you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate that. Secondly, if you want to assess the state of your marriage and find ways to transform your marriage, take our free assessment quiz and get your personalized results your results instantly. To do so, go to happiermarriagesecrets.com slash quiz and access the short quiz. You can get that through the quiz in get through the quiz in about 90 seconds or less. And my thing is your marriage is worth more than 90 seconds. Isn't that so? So take that today and you're now going to hear the announcer who will give you some closing remarks. We've come to the end of another exciting show. And if you enjoyed this podcast, one, make sure you give this show a rating and review. Two, subscribe to the show to get all new releases. And three, get your complimentary copy of the Five Secrets to a Happier Marriage ebook at kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. Again, it's kingsleygrant.com slash HMS ebook. See the link in the show notes. Do it today. Don't delay. Thanks so much for listening and make sure you tell one other spouse about this show or better yet, share it with them. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you his peace both now and forever.